Hi friends, welcome to Lunch Hour Garden Projects with Brooke. It is the middle of the day. It's not insanely hot, but it's pretty warm. And um, we, have, we have some crimes that have been happening in the garden, in the backyard garden, very specifically. So it is very hot, and during the hot times of the year, our resident squirrels, those little problems, because I'm trying not to cuss on this channel, um, they've been eating my tomatoes. So, they've been eating my green tomatoes. Let me show you the havoc that has been wreaked. They got an heirloom right there. It would almost make me less mad if they just ate the whole thing, but they just chew a little bit of it. And then they've been in this bed eating these. So, what I did was I installed an owl decoy. However, the victims have now been in this bed, which is short of the owl decoy. So we're gonna move that guy to right there. I'm working on non-lethal methods of keeping the squirrels away. Um, they are rampant in our neighborhood. The other things that, I'll show you one thing that has helped and one thing that has not. <laughs> this doesn't do anything. Um, so this is a squirrel repellent. It's called, it's from a brand called I Must Garden. It says it repels them from chewing and gnawing. Can confirm, it doesn't. It's made of garlic, castor oil, lemongrass oil, white pepper, cedar oil, clove oil. Um, it smells weird, and I don't like spraying it on my plants because it doesn't even work. This does work. This is a five pound container of cayenne pepper, and they hate it. Um, however, it only keeps them from getting in the beds on the ground. You don't want to put this like on your plants, you want to sprinkle it on the ground. It does keep them off the ground, but it does not keep them off the fence. And I have seen these parkour squirrels do some crazy, crazy stuff to get to the tomatoes. And so once the tomatoes get tall enough, they can literally hang from their back legs off, off of the side of the fence and they can like grab tomatoes with their grubby little hands. So we're gonna move the owl today. The other thing about that owl is it actually has a motion sensor and it has a swiveling head and it makes noise. Uh, we didn't have batteries the other day when we got it. So, I'm gonna go grab it and I'll show you everything about it and then we're gonna reinstall it and see if it works. Okay guys, so here's our owl decoy. This is by far one of the most ridiculous uh, gardening things I've ever done. Um, but let's put some batteries in this thing and I'll show you how it works. Now we're gonna have to, uh, our neighbors are in full support of this by the way, I did talk to them just so that they didn't think I was like a total crazy person. Uh, they also grow tomatoes that get stolen by the squirrels, so they are, they're down. They're down for whatever measures we need to provide. So, um, it has a little fin so it can get caught by the wind. Then, all right, is it gonna work? There's, That's amazing. I have to go show Cam. That was fun. Okay, so we screwed it in. There's two other places on the side to screw it in. Um, but we've got the motion sensor pointed at this side of the fence, which is where they usually come from because of all of these trees. So we've got the motion sensor pointed here. I'm honestly thinking about getting some bird stakes for the top of the fence. Um, I think I've officially hit like crazy garden lady levels and um, I'm kind of okay with it to be honest with you because the other place where the squirrels come in at is right here on the side of our house. They like hop from the tree in the front yard to the roof to the fence and then they go this way. So it's only a matter of time before they figure out that they can also go that direction. Um, like I'm winning. So I'm probably gonna sprinkle a little more cayenne pepper. Um, always wear a glove when you do that, by the way. That will be smart. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel good about this. 
feel real good about it. I'll update you later this week. I want to see what happens. Oh, there's one down there. I didn't even see that one. Wow, I am like legitimately so pissed off. I could literally rip every single one of these tomato plants out of the ground. Like I'm just feeding the fucking squirrels. Like why? Like why? Why do it? <laughs> uh, I'm so pissed off. Okay y'all, I'm gonna give you an update. It's not a good one. We put up the birds, the, the bird steaks that are very spiky. Um, I did watch a squirrel run over them and the squirrel yelped. So I do believe they're nice and sharp and effective. We put them right here, and then we also put them up on the top of the fence. However, we did not put them up in enough places. And I have watched these squirrels take four tomatoes today. And it's been a hot, dry uh, spring. So I don't have that many tomatoes back here to begin with, which is highly ironic because I have so many tomatoes from the community garden. I am just thanking my dang self that I planted determinants this year and that I will have plenty of effing tomatoes but I just won't have as many pretty heirlooms. So we're supposed to get a bunch of rain uh, tonight actually and tomorrow so that should stave off my problem for a few more days but I'm about to go to Home Depot and we're putting these bird spikes everywhere. So these bird spikes are very sharp and they are designed so that the squirrels don't want to walk on them. <sighs> I work so hard for literally half the year, every year, to have these fucking tomatoes. And these goddamn squirrels are just eating them. Literally, I'm watching one in the tree right now. The other thing that I tried that did not work was strong smells. I tried, I put peppermint oil in this spray guy. And not only did the cheap Amazon sprayer break, but it didn't work. So far, the only thing that has worked, besides a 22, which I don't have and don't plan on using, is cayenne pepper. That owl decoy kind of worked, and I feel like if I went really ham on the bird steaks, the bird steaks would also work. I even tried to set water out them for, out there for them for a few days. Raging, I'm raging. <sighs> hey y'all, how's it going? Um, I am here to give one final update on all of my squirrel mitigation efforts. Um, and I'm here to claim defeat. I'm here to claim defeat on uh, non-lethal methods of squirrel control. They might work for you. The people who lived at this house before us were feeding the squirrels. <laughs> Therefore, these squirrels know that there's a food source here, so. Lost a lot of hard work to these squirrels. We're supposed to get a bunch of rain tonight, so I'm hoping that's gonna help for a few days. And I'm still trying to make an ethical decision on what my next move is. There is a lethal non-toxic method that I'm heavily considering. But yeah, this is one of those gardening videos that doesn't end on a positive note. It's not, it's not super fun. I'm not gonna lie, it's incredibly frustrating. It probably seems pretty trivial to people who uh, don't garden. <laughs> um, but when you have something that uh, is inhibiting all of your hard work, I literally start planning this garden on Christmas day um, or the day after Christmas. 
that is like a yearly activity that I do and so by the time we get to this point in the year I have been looking forward to this for six months I have watered I have nurtured I have cared for and um, then you have pests taking your hard work and that really sucks so um, I already was having like a weird day just like work-wise and life-wise and uh, I feel very defeated so um, I hope if you have pests that you can figure out how to manage them properly um, yeah so we're gonna take a moment of zen <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening. We'll see you next time. Bum, bum, bum.